performance art for the end of the world. A crowd gathers around an empty frame suspended from the ceiling. Some see the face of their saviour, others find themselves lost in a tunnel. Those at the front with their checkbooks at the ready have the audacity to call it art. They're all correct, but they're also wrong to think a price can be ascribed to something we're only meant to talk about and not touch. The crowd is given the option to replace the frame with a mirror that only speaks the truth, like how a bowl of rotting fruit reveals bad luck or a time of death. We can accommodate the truth if we all share an understanding of what it means to be willing to lay down our weapons long enough to notice the cracks in the ceiling. Even the shortest histories take their time to course correct, to slip against the hands that direct it. But for many in the crowd, it's easier to look through nothing at a familiar than it is to stare an unknown enemy in the eyes. It's easier to carry on with letters written in invisible ink, even if they're ultimately mistaken for scrap paper. These are the thoughts that keep me up at night. The policies and quotas they hold up as progress, which I generously call white noise. And the realization we all emerge from the same chaos, slamming headfirst into riot after riot. If we treated diversity panels like performance reviews, maybe we'd actually get shit done. Instead of slamming fingers and doors, then blaming all fingers for provoking doors. Heaven allegedly waits in a sky that sounds like a badly dubbed film of two angels arguing over who gets the remote. There's a correlation between a constant noise designed to soothe and a puzzle we can't put back together. The crowd asks whether we should all have a say in what deserves to be safe in the frame. I've had too many of these conversations under fluorescent lights in offices and lecture theatres on stages before a paying audience, always running the circuit of acceptable answers in the wild clutches of self-preservation. It's like being trapped at a party that's too noisy and getting tired of explaining why your hands are always bloodied. The crowd knows what I'm talking about. Give us a frame and we'll show you what a lifetime of famine looks like. Even when we go to sleep with emptiness, we wake with our bodies filled with visions of every possible happening coming true.